Other questions? Hank. Hey, to what extent uh, do you think the government's obligated to reveal all the details that the media would like, and maybe even the, uh, the American public would like, uh, for example, on this raid uh, in the uh, battle line? Uh, so how to the specific details, some of which could compromise our military, our foreign, our foreign policy. Uh, where's, the, where's the line there? Where's the how line when you use yeah. 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 it? But I think we have a pretty healthy system, which is the government has a fair amount of power to keep things secret, more power than you might think, including punishing people that you know, those, and the press are going to press every time to get more information, and and um, and, and, and the battle gets fought out. And obviously, the press doesn't have a right to all the information, but they wouldn't be doing their job if they weren't asking for things. And and and, and the government doesn't have an obligation to give all the information. And. Presumably, you have government officials who are making sensible decisions about this. So I think I think that's basically all right. The thing that I spent a lot of time, particularly after 9/11, with national security issues, dealing with government officials who were saying you can't go with that. If you do, you'll compromise national security. And sometimes we wouldn't. Sometimes we modify. Sometimes we delay. But the thing that the government officials always said was, if I get the information, then I get to decide. I, I had one exchange with the director, then a director of the CIA. Where he was just furious, and why do you get to decide? I said, Well, that's what the Supreme Court says. Now, you have the right to keep the information away from me. That's fine. But if I get it, then I get to make a decision. Now, I will try to be responsible for making that decision and listen to what you have to say and take it into account. Uh, but ultimately, I get to decide. You don't get to decide. Fantastic. Yeah, Steve? You feel the same way if you get the information, say, through WikiLeaks and it was obtained. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, obtaining yeah. factual information through so, illegal means. Yeah. 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 Well, Daniel Ellsworth probably didn't obtain the Pentagon Papers legally. Right? <laughs> um, but, but WikiLeaks, I, I find it's in a different uh, way. If you think about it, as with other things in life, once it happened, it was obvious. Because the technology makes it now possible to disseminate worldwide huge amounts of information. So if it's not Julian Assange, it's going to be somebody else. It's a fact of life. I mean, if, if Daniel Ellsberg happened today, he just would have put all the Pentagon Papers online immediately. He wouldn't have to go to the New York Times. So we're going to be faced with this. Uh, that said, I think there's still a valuable role for traditional news organizations. It's not a coincidence, I think, that Assange did go to the New York Times and the Guardian and Der Spiegel, I think it was, in Germany. Because, first of all, the imprimatur helps some, but also you need some way of putting this in the context to make some sense out of it. It's, it's, it's a little bit, not just like, but a little bit like if you had access to all the daily rushes on a movie, you know, they take shots from all sorts of things, right? and you had all the, the, you still need a director and an editor to go into a room and actually make it into a story so you can understand it. So I think there's still a valuable lesson. But, but uh, you know, you cannot, as a journalist, um, uh, encourage illegal activity. But if somebody's committed illegal activity and they give it to you, then the Supreme Court says that's okay. Other questions? Yeah, on the way back to you. 